I want you to imagine that you're being born to a family where the father has put together three wives and that these wives have 27 children between them and all these women with all their children, they cannot provide a thing. Samuel Seringi grew up in that type of scenario. That's what inspired him to study journalism and obtain a master's degree in population studies. Today he works as a health reporter for the Nation Media Group. We are having the population growing, the resources shrinking, because like the land, as you can see, it's been torn to very small pieces, including my own sisters, my own brothers. They are having babies, but we can't plan for their growth. Kenya's population is expected to grow from 41 million to 87 million by 2050. Education and access to contraception is low, and some tribes and religions do not believe in it. What motivated me was how, what can we do? What can we do to our communities to ensure that, yes, we are able to give birth, but we give birth to children, we can be able to, to uh, give a decent education, decent health care, and, uh, and, and they can grow healthy. Many Kenyans have large families because of the high rates of infant mortality. They hope that those children who make it will eventually become their caretakers. My mom had, just between her, she will have 15 children. The ones surviving up to now, they are eight. But population specialists like Seringi believe large families exacerbate the cycle of poverty and ill health. The competition for resources was massive because any resource that was there, if it's a plate of food, seven or eight people coming to eat it. I mean, you can hardly have a share. The term family planning often causes fears of government or foreign control in Kenya, so experts use care when launching their educational campaigns. What we want is not that you should not have children, but the truth of the matter is that fewer people in any place can be able, given the economic situation in Kenya, to provide even for three children adequately. Seringi says the best method is to ask the right questions. The entry point is, what resources do you have? How do you wish to progress? How will you raise these children? That's what they can understand. Raising children isn't the only challenge to family planning. With increased access to health care, parents are living longer, but not necessarily better. Unemployment is high, and 30% of Kenyans live on less than $1 per day. As a result, few Kenyans can afford to care for their elderly parents. Seringi's mother is lucky. If she did not have children who are able to support her, she would just die there. It's Seringi who bears most of that burden. His steady job allowed him to rebuild his childhood compound with sturdier housing, a well, and latrines. He also sends food money home each month and takes his mother to Nairobi for medical services. But it's a lot of responsibility. For every 100 people working, they are supporting 80 people. You see that? But for instance, me, if I'm working, on average, I'll support 80 people who are not working. Most of them are old and the children. That responsibility also comes with a sense of achievement, one he wishes more Kenyans could experience. My mom is sick, but I can tell you I'm proud of the years she has been alive. Because she's been alive, because of accessing health care. Not very good, but at least almost every year we are taking her away from home to a town where we live and she gets good treatment, she gets checked up. That's why. After I completed university, I could tell you that one of my biggest challenges or one thing that I really did resolve was that I must change the face of first my family second, my community. Seringi was fortunate enough to win some loans and scholarships to attend university. But in order to make ends meet, his brothers encouraged him to stay with them in this Nairobi slum. He doesn't regret it. They felt that if I came to this place, 
then I might see the kind of livelihoods that people live. I might be able to work harder and get out of the slum. So this is why my brother lives. This is the family actually. Um, and they, they, where is the daughter? Come. Bring us. This is the first Yes. Hey, Baba, come. This come, is come the second born. The third born. Seringi wasn't able to influence the reproductive choices of this brother's family, but he's hopeful his work will have an impact on their kids and those in the wider community. How do you change that? You have to get the education that is necessary. From Kenya, this is Julian Gage with the International Reporting Project.